A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today, an analytic geometry exercise, which I like to present to my students when we just learn Pythagoras in three dimensions and also the norm of a vector. I hope you are going to enjoy the video. It's just an example of how beautiful simple mathematics can truly be and how nice we can look for patterns, so how we can look for nice patterns in mathematics. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brilliant. More information at the end of the video. And now we are going to dive right in. Now, the problem is quite simple, or the statement of the problem. At first, my students have to draw a three-dimensional coordinate system, just like this. And the only thing that they need to do now is they are going to put a unit square, not a unit square, a unit cube, right? at the very origin. So this right here is the sketch. They put it here. That's all. And now they do the same thing once again by putting another cube next to this cube. We are just going to add another one looking like this now. So what we now got are two axis parallel cubes where one is located right at the center. And now we want to construct ourselves a few vectors. So this is like the main exercise. Get yourself the vector out of two different points in three dimensions. And then we want to get ourselves the norm of the vector. And we are going to start very simply by just finding out what, for example, this side length right here is. So meaning from the origin, from zero, 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 Two, and this vector right here is going to be represented by the arrow from 0, 0, 0 from the origin. Two, now this right here is our x coordinate at 1 because we had a unit cube, so 1, 0, 0. And obviously, this is not a very hard problem at all. If we were to get ourselves this vector, this vector is going to be represented by 1, 0, 0. And if we were to find out how long this is, well, it just does make sense visually that this side length is exactly one unit long. So if we were to get ourselves the norm of the vector, it's just one unit. We're going to leave it at that. Now we are going to continue. What about other side lengths? For example, by the same logic, let us take a look at the longest side length that we could get of this um, basically double cube. We are going to take a look at this very side length here. And by the same logic, we could get ourselves a vector. This vector being spanned from, okay, so this coordinate of this point right here is going to be exactly at zero to zero. Starting from the origin, we are going to get zero to zero as our vector. And if we were to look for the length of this, well, it's obviously just going to be two because it's just two times the side length of our unit cube. Don't worry, it's going to get a bit more interesting than that in a minute. So if we were to take a look at the norm of this vector, we are going to get two. Okay, now let us take a look at something which is not this trivial, like the trivial side lengths of our cubes. Why not take a look at, for example, a diagonal, which is going to be spent on the faces of our cube. What about the diagonal from the origin to this point that we have right here, right in the middle of our two cubes where they are going to meet, meaning this vector being represented by this. Well, let us get ourselves the vector. At first, once again, we are going to get from zero, 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 over to, now let us think. When it comes to the x coordinate, this is going to be one. When it comes to the y coordinate, we are going to go one to the right. So we are going to go to one, one and other than that zero in the z coordinate meaning our vector is going to be exactly one one zero okay now we want to find out what the length of this right here is and if we just take a look at this in the xy plane, this is nothing other than just using Pythagoras on a triangle. If we do a protection in the xy plane then what we basically did is we got ourselves this part of the cube, which is represented by a square. This right here is x and y. We are going to switch it. It really doesn't matter at all. Getting ourselves Pyth Pythagoras, this right here has a side length of 1. This has a side length of 1, meaning overall we are going to get the square root of 2 as the length of our vector. 
Okay, nice. So we got one, two, and the square root of two. Are there any more diagonals represented in this um, sketch right here? Well, there are a few more. For example, what about going from the origin to this point that we have here? Or maybe let's make it a bit more interesting. The students are free to choose any vector they want, as long as they basically get every diagonal and every side length out. Um, let us start from this point over here to this point on the y-axis. Now, this point over here is 1, 0, 0. And if we go on the y-axis two units to the right, we are going to land at the point 0, 2, 0. Now, constructing our as a vector leaves us exactly at, well, we are just going to subtract coordinates, so we are going to get negative 1, 2, and 0. Once again, by the same logic that we had before, we could just take a look at all of this in the xy plane. Looking something like this. And what we did is we went from basically here to there, something of that sort. We could switch x and y around, really doesn't matter. The only thing that we need to know is that this side length is 2 in the y direction and this side length is 1 in the x direction. Meaning overall that we are going to get by regular Pythagoras, by the Pythagorean norm in two dimensions, just the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is nothing other than the square root of 5. Okay, nice. So we already got four things out. We got 1, 2, square root of 2 and square root of 5. Is there anything else that we could do? Well, we could proceed, for example, with the longest diagonal overall. This diagonal being spanned from, for example, the origin to this point that we have up here. This is something that we could do next. Or maybe we could go from the origin to this point that we have up here. And this is where it actually gets a bit more interesting. Because what we do is we are going to span a vector in three dimensions because we are going to raise our x, y and z coordinates by for example one unit by traveling from the origin to up here, meaning we need to employ a different kind of Pythagoras, the, the Euclidean norm in three dimensions. And we are just going to derive this real quick. I think uh, this is a nice part and maybe you have never seen a proof for that before. So, so here it is. Let us just suppose that we have a three dimensional coordinate system just like this once again. And what we are going to do is we are going to place two points in here. We are going to say here's one point and the other point has a certain C coordinate. Meaning if we were to project ourselves right triangles into here once again, it's going to look something like this. This point right here is going to float inside of some kind of xy plane. We can raise it upwards and downwards. Meaning this right here is a certain distance. We're going to call it A. We don't know what it is. This right here is the C coordinate basically. Or when we speak in the language of vectors, this right here is delta Z. This is just the difference in our Z coordinate. And this right here is the distance that we are looking for. This right here is the length of our vector, if we were to take a look at the vector here. Now, we could compute this by using Pythagoras. We are going to get that the length of our vector is the same as the square root of delta z plus a, but all of those squared. But now we are still stuck with a. And as mentioned before, this side length a is floating somewhere in the xy plane which is shifted upwards or downwards. So what we could do since um, this length right here, this axis basically, this y axis is going to be um, perpendicular to this one right here. We can also just construct ourselves another side length right here where this is going to turn into a right triangle. Now what we got here is just the difference in x coordinates basically when it comes to those points. And this right here is the, um, is the difference in y coordinates, delta x and delta y. And what we can do is we can use Pythagoras once again. This right here is our hypotenuse a. So we're going to get that a squared is nothing other than delta x squared plus delta y squared. Now by taking the square root, we could solve for a, but this is not needed because take a look at this right here, a squared is included into here. We can substitute this expression into here and what we're going to get out is the Euclidean norm in just three dimensions. Namely, it's delta x squared plus delta y squared 
plus delta z squared, where all those deltas are just the differences in the x coordinates, y coordinates, c coordinates, respectively, when it comes to constructing our zesta vector. So our vector overall is going to look like this, delta x, delta y, and delta c. And yeah, this is basically all that we have to do. And this is how I basically prove Pythagoras or the Euclidean norm in three dimensions in class. Now we can go ahead and get started. Let us construct our vector. Let's make it a bit more interesting once again. Let's, for example, start um, right here at this point. Um, and we're going to go up here. We're going to take this diagonal, which spans right from opposite corners. Um, okay. This point right here is 1, 1, 0. And our vector is going to go to exactly, we got 2 in the y-coordinate, 0 in the x-coordinate, and 1 in the z-coordinate. So we are going to get 0, 2, and 1. Constructing our sesta vector, this right here is going to yield overall um, negative 1. We are going to go 1 back, and we are going to stay in the z-coordinate. Um, yeah. This right here is our vector, and now we can use Pythagoras in three dimensions, giving ourselves the square root of negative 1 squared, which is just 1, plus 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1 squared, which is nothing other than the square root of 3. And last but not least, we can do the same thing for this huge diagonal going from here to, for example, up here. It really doesn't matter where you place it, you can all place those at the origin, but this makes it at least a tiny little bit more interesting. Meaning we are going to go from, for example, um, 1, 2, 0, over 2, and this is going to be 0, 0, 1. Leaving us overall with a vector being negative 1, negative 2, and 1. If we were to get ourselves the length of this vector, we are going to get 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 squared, this is 4. So 5 overall plus 1 is going to be 6, but this in square roots. And here is where the beautiful part comes in. Maybe you can spot a pattern. We are going to get square roots out. Um, we have square root of 2, we have square root of 3, square root of 5, and square root of 6. For a nice pattern, we are only missing square root of 1 and square root of um, square root of 4. This is not a problem at all, because we also had those side lengths 2 and 1. As mentioned before, 1 is nothing other than the square root of 1. This is just how the idempotent um, is constructed in the real numbers. This is the square root of 1. And we also get 2 being the square root of 2 squared, which is the square root of 4. Hey, that's a pretty cool pattern. Square root of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And here is a better sketch of what I'm talking about. Doesn't this look quite beautiful? You take two unit uh, cubes, put them next to each other, and you get those nice side lengths and also diagonals being just a square root from 1 to 6. That is awesome, right? And I want you to play around with this idea a tiny bit more. Maybe you can add more cubes to this thing and maybe you can get yourself the square root of 7, square root of 8, and so on and so forth by construction. Try it out. See if you can get it. That's nice, right? I think that's a pretty beautiful fact. And maybe um, you're also a teacher and you could use this in your linear algebra and analytic geometry class to teach your students about Pythagoras in three dimensions and also constructing vectors and the like. And if you are a sucker for more visual mathematics, visual proofs, and all the things that we did today and even more, then the contents of today's sponsor, Brilliant, might be the perfect fit for you. Now, visual proofs are a huge part of mathematics, and especially if you are a beginner, for example, in the field of analytic geometry, visual proofs are going to be your best friend because mathematics can, can go from 0 to 100 extremely quick. And if you're not careful, you can slide into abstract stuff faster than you can blink. But this doesn't have to be the case. A lot of things, just like what we did here, can be done visually. No need for huge Pythagorean norms or whatever it is. Sometimes you just need to think clearly in a visual space. And this is where Brian can come in totally clutch. With their nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, you name it. 
everything you can think of in the STEM field, Print got you covered. So if you want to start learning something new today or brush up on old topics that you have maybe forgotten and you just want to read into those once again, Print is where you should look. They make it really easy on the user to understand new concepts in no time at all. Take for example um, Markov chains. It's a huge topic. Veritasium has made a video on it. Brilliant actually packs everything with the Markov chains and the probabilities and everything that has to do with Markov chains into a nice and easy to understand course underlined by all of those visuals and things that you can play around with graphics. It's just absolutely wonderful to use Brilliant and it just flows so nicely into every kind of workflow that you have right now at university or at, at school. It's easily integratable into what you do right now and you should just give it a shot. See for yourself if it is something that you could benefit from with the great visualizations and everything. It's learning by doing in the finest form and I can't recommend it enough. They have been the sponsor of the channel for years by now and I do not regret it. It's a great service. I love using it and I also love using it in class for my students to just show them visual proofs and geometry, for example, in sixth grade. So try it out, check it out for completely free by using my link at the top of the description, print.org slash flamblemaps or the QR code somewhere up here. Check it out, do not fear, just try it out, no payment needed. But if you feel like this could be something for you for the long term, just make sure to use my link here entirely and get 20% of an annual premium subscription. It's cool, it's just absolutely amazing and I just love to promote the services here on my channel. Try it out and see if it's something for you and this would support the channel big time and also Brilliant and the whole community as a whole. So try it out, support the channel this way and I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy today's video and up until next video I wish you guys a splendid day. See ya!